In the 19th century, sport was considered to be man's work, and it was also seen to be a way of instilling patriotism in the population and also developing the character of those who played it. Patriotism is a devotion to one's country and a willingness to defend it. And a sense of patriotism was often achieved through sport. When we think about the British Empire and its colonies at the time, they extended into many regions of the world, including Australia. To administer its empire, the British needed public servants and army personnel to maintain its policy of colonisation. And because these people were spread throughout the world and were far from home, Britain needed to be sure that they would protect its interests. And so it became essential to instil in these people a sense of patriotism. And organised sport became the perfect way to achieve a sense of patriotism. And through the education system, public and private schools, virtues such as loyalty, discipline and sacrifice were further developed through sport, particularly in males. And of course, Patriotism links to, links to war and fighting for country and organised team sports developed a sense of national pride for Britain and the beginning of patriotism in Australia. It was thought to develop qualities in males to help them to be strong and courageous and those qualities were often those desirable for defending the nation. And throughout this presentation, it's important to think about comparing sport now with what it was in the 19th century. And you need to ask yourself the question, does sport still promote patriotism today? And if you think about sport and watching an Australian national team play against another nation, you can see that there is a lot of patriotism in those that support their country. And you can see in the players that or the athletes that represent the nation, there is a lot of pride. And you can see the pressure that the athletes face when they represent the country and the desire to represent the country. It is a big opportunity for, for athletes to represent the nation. And so playing against another country is an opportunity for Australia to develop its national identity. And so it does still exist today to a degree. Uh, however, the links to fighting and war perhaps are more metaphorical today rather than uh, reality. And this brings us to this idea of nationalism, which is a loyalty or devotion to one's country above all else. And that can be expressed in political, social and or cultural ways. And we see this when Australian national teams compete against other nations. Sometimes it's more than just sport on the line and it's national pride and it can even be political in some cases, which we'll talk about a little bit further on in the unit. The idea of muscular Christianity helps us to understand how sport was used in the 19th century to develop a man's character. In 1850s England, muscular Christianity was a concept that influenced schools, universities and working men's clubs. It was, it was designed to try and create or, or influence males to be healthy, morally upright Christians, ready to serve and defend the country. So it did relate to patriotism. Defence of the British Empire was considered man's work. And school sports, including rugby and cricket, were designed to instill the characteristics of courage, determination, self-discipline and manliness. And the idea of a healthy body and fine morals of sportsmanship, playing by the rules and leading an active Christian life were seen as desirable in young men in the 19th century. And so muscular Christianity was a concept or an ideology that was promoted in many private Christian schools through sport. And of course, it, it began in England and it continued in Australia. And so the concept of manliness, a tendency to show particularly male characteristics, was a desirable outcome of sport in the 19th century. 
Sport was a way of developing strength of character, masculinity or manliness and a devotion to patriotism, to the homeland. And sport was seen as a way of developing or building a man's strength uh, and developing his manliness. And you can see up to this point that sport certainly was a male domain in the 19th century. And I ask you to think about what's happening today with sport. Does sport still develop this idea of manliness? When we look at sport on television, in the newspaper and in our popular culture, are we still seeing a male-dominated Uh, sports environment and although we've seen many changes with regard to female participation I think people still like to watch clearly uh, male dominated sports are rating very very highly on television and drawing very very big crowds still although things have certainly shifted and we are getting more opportunities for women does sport still promote this idea of, of male-dominated uh, sports being popular? Uh, it certainly shows in the media and in the amount of people that attend sport and how it's covered in newspapers and online.